Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartook-61. Previously, we listened in as the party discovered an old dungeon entrance and split up to investigate. With humanoid raiders in the area, Bulger and Karina stayed above ground with the mounts to make sure the party wasn't surprised as they investigated the old dungeon. One of the massacred explorers was located in an antechamber below, was following by a storage room filled with cobwebs. We rejoined the group with Fargus returning above ground and Bulger going into the depths exclaiming the find of a corpse. A chorus of shh came from the storage room as Sister Elaine reminded the former sailor that they did not know if anything was in the complex. The gnome quickly apologized in hushed tones and asked what they had found. A quick recap was given with the understanding that only old, inconsequential items had been found. A secondary door was pointed out and the group opted to move with Sister Elaine to the back with the torch as Cave and Lady Irena took point. The pair of elven individuals noticed that the dungeon door was quite swollen and warped as if humidity had grown it beyond its form. Several attempts to open it failed and the group decided that they would have to bash their way through it. As Bulger and Cave began to smash at the door, Lady Irena turned to the Sister Elaine and pointed out, We sure are professionals about this as the cleric nodded in agreement. After a small hole was created in the door, Bulger stuck his head through, garnering belated yells of no from the trio. The gnome pulled back and complained about the yelling. When Kate pointed out that the door could have been trapped, the former sailor paled in color and stepped back. Uh, I, I, I didn't consider that, he muttered. Kate tossed a lit torch through the hole and waited a few moments. With no noises, he gave the door a swift kick, finishing it off. The group, armed, entered the room and found it to be a cistern chamber. A brick well sat in the center of the chamber, with several buckets lining the wall. The bard and mage entered first, followed by the gnome and the human. Two more torches hung in the wall and were quickly illuminated to show very little was present here, aside from an archway on the far end of the room. The area was searched quickly, and the PCs noticed that the water level was unusually high in the well, but Bulger surmised that it was because of the depth they had traveled, along with the proximity of the creek to where they were. Nodding in agreement, the group moved through the archway and down a long hallway. Every 20 feet, the group encountered a cave-in that indicated the presence of other offshoot tunnels that had once led into this hallway. At one point, Cave reached out to a pile of collapsed rock, but was stopped by the hands of the diminutive gnome. Uh, you don't want to do that, laddie. You could bury us under more rock, he cautioned. Cave quickly withdrew his hand and continued down the corridor. Old faded murals decorated the walls, but the damage was too extensive to determine what the paintings had been of. After several hundred feet of travel, the group came to a T intersection. Rubble was strewn through an archway on the right, and a wooden door was on the left. The group briefly pondered what lay beyond the broken stones, but opted to move on to the wooden door. Listening first, Lady Irena reported hearing nothing and checked the door. Unlike the previous ones, this door functioned as it should and opened into a large room filled with cages and implements of pain and torture. Spotting no movement, the group entered and Sister Elaine began to light torches in the wrought iron brackets on the wall. Cave, Lady Irena, and Bulger began to move down the middle of the room, searching for items of interest. Bones lay in each cage, and the bard remarked that there must have been a prison block here. A girlish shriek from the gnome caused everyone to whirl around and see the danger. A wooden portcullis was present on the sidewall and had pierced the body of a prisoner. The skeletal remains were all that were present, but had startled the, the gnome. Do I need to hold your hand? 
came the dry response from Sister Elaine. The retort got a cross look from the gnome, who repositioned his armor. I was surprised, not scared, came his rebuke, which caused Cabe and Lady Irena to smirk. The group continued to search the room and discovered another exit out. Lady Arena reported that she was not feeling well and stated that she was going to go topside and have Karina return in her place. Sister Elaine shared her opinion and opted to join her. Bolger and Cabe grab some old furniture and breaks the new door in the event that problems lay beyond. Levard then withdrew the old journal and began to examine it as Bolger continued to search the area. The way back to the entrance proved unremarkable, and the females quickly made their way up the stairs, finding the ranger and the waif wandering the perimeter of the area. Upon seeing them pop out of the dungeon, the pair quickly ran over and were debriefed on the situation. The women were told that nothing unusual was spotted and everything was quiet on the once serene valley floor. Karina was anxious to enter her first dungeon, and Sister Elaine passed her the torch, with Fargus Stoutheart following her into the depths. The wife quickly popped her head up and told Peepers to help the women guard the camp as the creature was attempting to follow its mistress below. Dejected, the reptilian creature wandered over to the cleric and mage. Reaching the bottom of the stairs, Karina exhaled quickly at the sight of a burned corpse. Fargus reassured her that they were not responsible and he was quite dead. The waif asked if anyone had checked the man's boots, which puzzled the ranger, who told her that they had not. The young woman quickly pulled off the man's boots and recovered a small silver dagger in one and a gemstone, a black opal, in the other. Offering the ranger part of the spoils, he declined and asked her how she knew. The waif explained that growing up on the streets taught her to always hide what she valued, pointing out that no one likes to check stinky feet she stated that the hiding spot was obvious. She wandered into the next room where the torches were beginning to dim as Fargus called out to her about what she kept in her boots, but received no answer. After following the trail of dimming torches, the pair arrived in the old cell block where Cave and Bolger were waiting patiently. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at the Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.